I'm not a great hiker, but I like going out sometimes and getting into nature to places where I couldn't get with a car. My skill level isn't very high. I, I sort of stick to easy to moderate trails. But being out there in nature opens me to a different kind of experience. You know, many people experience being in nature as a time when they find a connection with the natural world, with something beyond them, as, as well as that sense of everything else in life just sort of fading away, all the cares and worries moving into the background while you're just able to be present to the beauty of nature around. So, you know, I really appreciate that experience. And, and I see that as part of the spiritual dimension of, of being in nature and of hiking. Recently, my partner and I took some time off. And one of the things we did over those days off uh, was some hiking. And one evening, he sent me a link to uh, a trail that we hadn't been on before. And I read about the trail and checked out some, some other um, descriptions of it on, on different websites. And I learned that this trail started off, uh, I jumped sort of right into it, that the first three quarters of a mile was a, a little bit rough going. It would be going right uphill uh, through the woods and that there would be a lot of tree roots and rocks and things on this trail. But that once you got to the top, it would be a big open expanse. One person described it as a, as a lush meadow. Other people described it simply as this big opening. And I knew ahead of time that on the, the one side would be this granite mountain with rocks, and the other side would open to a vista where you could see out over the valley below. And it just sounded really wonderful. So yeah, I was, was up and game for doing this. So the next day we went out. And, you know, I thought in the first five minutes, oh, this isn't too bad. I'm just trotting along and doing my thing. And then we got deeper in the woods and the, the climb got much steeper. And the ground was wet so that the roots were slippery. And there were lots of roots and some rocks. And I realized that I had to take each step very carefully so that I wouldn't fall. And, you know, I'm at the age where a fall is just not a good thing to do. Uh, so I wanted to be careful that I didn't fall and I had my trekking poles. And there were parts where the, the path, the trail was so narrow that I could just fit through with me and my trekking poles. But I was making my way and as this, as I was on this trail, something occurred to me that I hadn't thought of before. It was a different kind of insight that I think is relevant for many aspects of life, as well as for the spiritual life. We all have goals and we're encouraged to set goals. We're encouraged to set goals professionally, goals for working out or weight loss, Goals around spirituality and religion, you know, there are people who are religious who want to follow God's will for them. There are people who are spiritual that want to achieve a perfect sense of peace. There are many different ways in which we have goals. And it occurred to me that being on this trail, going up to this clearing, was a goal for me. I wanted to go up and see what it was like. I had people's descriptions of what that would be like. But I didn't know for myself what it would be like. I wouldn't know until I got there. But the process of getting there was challenging for me. I had to take each step at a time or else I was afraid I would fall. And in fact, one time I did fall. And what happened when I fell? Well, I'm making my way and I realize that the woods opened up a little bit on my right. And so I sort of looked off to see what's there on my right as I'm taking a step. And wouldn't you know, my foot came down wrong and I slipped and I fell. And I didn't hurt myself and I got right back up. I was a little embarrassed, but I kept right on going. But I realized that I needed to watch each place I put a foot so that each foot would be carefully located 
to prevent me from falling, which meant that if I wanted to look around, I had to stop and stand still. And there were times that I did. I wanted to see what was in the woods around me, not just what was below me. And I wanted to get a sense of where I was. I sort of think of that being like my meditation time every day. I pause from what I'm doing, from my regular routine, to break away and, and just stay in one place. And in doing so, I have a better sense of where I am and what's around me, as well as what's within me. Along the way, there were people who passed me who said, keep on going, it's worth going up here. And I believed them, but I still had to do the work and I still didn't know what I would find. At the end of that trail on the top of that clearing, yeah, it was big and wide. It was probably about a two mile loop to walk all around it. And I'm walking around and as I'm at one place, I realize I could go down this little path and be down by a little waterfall and sit on a rock in front of a waterfall. So I did that for a while. And I experienced things that I wouldn't have experienced if I hadn't stuck to the path and put one foot in front of another, watched where I was going and been focused on the way I was going. Was it a little bit tedious? Yeah, but you know what? Life's a little bit tedious. We sometimes do things not because we're seeing a result, but because we believe there will be a result that ultimately happens that's good. And that's what happened on this path, this, this trek that I was making up the side of a mountain and going up into this big opening. And yes, it was beautiful country there. It was beautiful trees, autumn colors. There was a vista to look out that was breathtaking and it was well worth the effort. But I didn't know that for sure when I started. When I started, I needed to put one foot in front of the other and take my time. As I reflected on this more, I thought back to one of the spiritual writers whom I really value a great deal. And that's Teresa of Avila, a Spanish mystic from the 16th century. And to paraphrase Teresa, one of the things she said was that there isn't a spiritual person who's so great that they don't need to start every day as a beginner. Each of us needs to start every day as a beginner. We need to put one foot in front of another and enter that process. And it's in that process of doing our practice, of doing the things that we need to do that support our life, that we reach a point where life can flourish for us. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the bell, share this video, and leave me some comments about your sense of the process of your own spiritual growth. Is it like going up a, a trail with lots of roots and, and rocks that you could slip over? Or is it something different? I'd like to know. Thanks.